I think all art has a story to tell if you look close enough. I always think of myself as a visual storyteller. People always want to know more about the art. This is the story behind the painting, the Dolly Pop Guild. Hi everyone, Paul Richmond here. I think that we are all drawn to celebrities that represent to us the best versions of ourselves. And honey, on the inside, I'm a big, busty, blonde, dripping in sequins and fringe. We all need something bigger than ourselves to believe in. Some people find it at church. I found it at Dollywood. I painted the Dolly Pop Guild because I was talking with a friend about how, when I was a kid, my tastes were a little different than my peers. For example, while other kids were fascinated by The Wizard of Oz, I was enthralled with the best little horror house in Texas. <laughs> Maybe that says something about me. Something about my young self really identified with Dolly Parton, this flamboyant caricature of femininity. I think part of it was because she seemed to embrace all of those qualities that I was taught to be ashamed of within myself. I would go to bed every night listening to Dolly on my little cassette tape Walkman, but because I didn't know anybody else who had the same fascination, I was really embarrassed for anybody else in my class to find out. I hated when people would talk about their favorite music or if teachers would ask us for some reason. I just knew if I answered truthfully, it would be bad. When I was 12 years old, I decided I was not going to be ashamed of my secret obsession anymore, and I went to my art class and told the teacher, I want to meet Dolly Parton. Together we brainstormed a scheme that involved me making a giant drawing and convincing my family to go to Dollywood, her theme park in Tennessee, so that I could give it to her in person. The first hurdle was convincing my family to go along with this. My dad always tried to get me to throw the football with him after school, which was not my idea of a good time. But I thought if I humored him one night, maybe I could work that angle. So he would always throw the ball and I could never catch it. <laughs> so and he would back away further and further and it was just, you know, a nightmare. So he was standing really far away and he was about to throw the ball and I said, Dad, wait, if I catch this, I want something. And he kind of laughed because he knew there was no chance I would catch it. I said, if I catch it, I want us to go to Dollywood this spring. Lo and behold, I caught it. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. That's sort of the moral of this whole story, really. I started a letter writing campaign to Dollywood to convince them to let me you know, meet her and give her the drawing. At first they said no, she's too busy, she doesn't have time to meet with people. I knew in my heart that I was supposed to meet her and give her this drawing. So every no to me just meant, okay, I need to find another route. And eventually I got the go ahead that I was waiting for. They invited us to come down a day early before the park opened when she was rehearsing for concerts. So I got to go backstage with my family. We all met her. She was wonderful. It was a dream come true. She could not have been nicer. She acted like it was the highlight of her life meeting us. <laughs> it was a great experience. My love of Dolly was really the beginning of a, a long process of learning how to love and accept myself. One of my favorite Dolly quotes is, find out who you are and do it on purpose. That's what Dolly taught me and that's the story behind the painting. Thanks for watching. I hope you will go down and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and leave me some comments because I love chatting with you. Until next time, y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> that was a bad Dolly impression, sorry. <laughs>